Hey, how you doing? So I've decided to skip ahead by an episode and start taking a look at some of the new modules I've made recently. We'll come back to Gerald in the near future. I'm just waiting to place a bulk order of jackpots and switches without paying an arm and a leg for it. As you can see, I've also got the power going into the second box and moved the green and yellow modules into it, including some even newer modules like this ADSR envelope and triangle and square LFO. Recently, I've been trying to figure out the power for the second box. And to be honest, the frequency central power supplies are damn expensive to ship to Australia. I figured I'm keeping everything single rail for the time being. So I started looking to other power supply options that just offer ground and 12 volts. I've been seeing a lot of other builders starting to use these meanwhile switch mode power supplies and I figured it couldn't hurt to find out what all the fuss was about. After doing a bit of hunting and reading, I eventually worked out that Jaycar has 12 volt 3 amp ones for 30 bucks. So I hoofed it down to the shop to go and get one and a mains cable to hook it all up. But once I got home and wired it all together, along with the spare bus board and moved some modules into the box, I started getting weird behaviour and the modules weren't interacting properly with one another. Well long story short, it basically turned out that I just needed a long cable to connect ground between the two boxes. And then everything started working perfectly. But it took me like a whole day to figure that out. But hey, that's what learning's about, right? A lot of people say that these switch mode power supplies are kind of noisy. But I'm not sure if I mean noise in the power rails or this kind of noise. I read a few reports and forum comments that these power supplies can emit a high-pitched whine or even sing when certain modules are connected to it, which it's definitely doing, but I think that'll disappear over time as more and more modules are connected into the box and drawing current from the supply. But the point of all that being, this thing is bloody ripper. It's a stupid low price and delivers more than enough juice to power an entire box. I hope. So anyway, what module are we looking at today? Well, as you can already tell by the title of this video, the sample and hold. If you've seen my last video, then you already know the story behind why I built it. Basically, to just try and fill a gap up here with something fun and useful. So just what exactly is a sample and hold? Well, in basic terms, it's a modulation source where we can feed in a continuously changing voltage. Sample that voltage at a certain instance, and then hold the sampled voltage at the output until it receives another sample of the voltage at the input. If all that sounds a bit confusing, well maybe this diagram will help. So as you can see, we have a clock or sample signal running along the top. Then two different examples of an input signal. One is white noise and the other a triangle wave. And as we can see, our outputs are showing a step voltage that changes every time the sample signal is received. In the case of the white noise, we get a stepped random voltage on the output. As white noise contains an infinite amount of frequencies, the moment the sample signal is received, the voltage could be anything between 0 to V max. So if we use this to modulate a VCO, we would hear a series of random tones. In the triangle waves case, we can see a staircase pattern being created on the output as the voltage rises and falls in a continuous way. So if we use this to modulate a VCO, we would hear a series of step tones rising and falling in pitch. And this sample rate can also be adjusted from any arbitrary amount of time, from seconds to days, right down to audio rate, which creates some pretty whack sounds. And on another quick note, this is also part of the process for an analog to digital converter. When the voltage has been sampled, it is then converted into a binary number that then allows digital signal processing to take place. So what features does this sample and hold have? Taking a look at the module, we can see it's a tight little number, with the space really being maximised as much as possible. It felt like a waste to have a small module with room to spare on the panel, so I turned it into a dual sample and hold with some extra features. So for each sample and hold, we have an input, an output with some indication LEDs, a sample input that is normal to the second sample input, and then some adjustable gate outputs, also with their own indication LEDs. And I've also added its own internal white noise source that is constantly being sampled when nothing is plugged into the inputs and they're also receiving a sample signal. Then I also added an extra jack to patch out the white noise to wherever else in the boxes. So without further ado, let's jump into a few patch examples before we take a look at how the module works behind the panel. So probably the classic example of using a sample and hold 
is to create R2-D2 style bleeps and bloops with a VCO. So what we have is the filter being pushed into self-oscillation to create a sine wave and acting as our VCO, with the output going into the mixer for recording. We then have a cable from the crazy clock going into our sample input on the sample and hold, then another cable from the output going into one of our CV inputs on the filter. And as you can see, the indication LEDs for both of the sample and holds are flashing as they constantly sample the internal white noise. But if we now unmute the mixer, we can hear the random bleeps and bloops reminiscent of our droid friend. <laughs> Now if I plug the envelope generator, creating a long rising and falling voltage into the input of the sample and hold, we can now hear how a series of step pitches is created from the overdriven filter. Okay, so this random or step modulation is pretty fun, but how can we use it in a bigger patch? So what I now have is a voice path with the TTO and filter, and then the kick drum for a bit of rhythm. I'm using each sample and hold to create a stepped random modulation, one to modulate the pitch on the TTO, and the other to modulate the cutoff on the filter. But I'm actually using a high frequency ramp wave from the TTO as the sample input for both of the sample and holds. I found that the internal white noise has a bit of bleed through and creates a kind of dirty modulation, whereas the high frequency wave kind of cleans it up a bit. But what I'm also doing is taking the sample signal into the clock divider so that we can use a faster division to modulate the cutoff on the filter and then a slower division to modulate the pitch on the TTO and then also another division to trigger the kick drum. So now if I unmute the mixer, we get instant techno. So another way that we can use the sample and hold is as a type of bit crusher down sampler kind of thing. So I've got this little repeating plucky melody being created by the TTO and filter. And I'm also using the sync input on the TTO to add a little bit of frequency modulation to the oscillator. But I'm using the Turing machine to control the pitch and its gate output to trigger the ADSR envelope. So kind of cool, but pretty standard. But what happens if we now take our little melody and now feed it into the sample and hold and then back out to the mixer? Well at the moment, it's just acting as a kind of hard cut tremolo because we're feeding it a pretty slow sample signal. But listen to what happens if we now increase the sample signal up to audio rates. We start to get these weird ringing resonant vocal vowel sounds. 
So another fun thing I like to do is put music through the sample and hold, acting as a down sampler. We can take a pretty normal sounding song and then just mangle the hell out of it, creating some sounds that just would not be possible without a module like this. I'm using a bit of Richard Horton, who makes fantastic down tempo acoustic chill out music. I don't know how to describe it exactly, but good shit anyway. Plus he records all his own music and then even cuts his own vinyls, so I recommend checking out his work. But point being, it's better than half the shit on the YouTube audio library, and because he self releases, I hopefully won't get flagged by the copyright police. So we have a pretty normal sounding tune, but now listen to it when it's been down sampled. Absolute madness. This creates these resonant vocal vowel sounds out of a lot of music, and it just sounds absolutely whack. So what the heck is actually going on here? Well quick math, to make a perfect sample of a signal, we must at a minimum have the sampling frequency twice that of the input frequency. Because humans can hear between roughly 20 to 20,000 Hz, this is why digital music is sampled at 44,000 Hz. But if we sample the input signal at slightly under the minimum sampling frequency, then we start to introduce artifacts that can add extra harmonics to the output signal resulting in these weird, spooky sounding effects. So how exactly does a sample and hold work behind the panel? Well here's a schematic I prepared earlier. So the main part of a sample and hold is just these few components in the middle. Two op amp buffers, a switch, a charging cap, and that's it. We can see the white noise source connected into a switching jack on the input, so that the sample and hold will sample the white noise when nothing is plugged into the input, then break that connection when something else is plugged in. I've then also added a few extra op amps connected to the output. This one up here is just an adjustable comparator to create our gate output and activate the indication LED. I also added the 1M resistor and 10PF cap, just for a bit of stabilisation. But to be honest, I don't think it really has made much difference. So far, I haven't actually found many uses for the gate output, but I'm sure something will come along one day. Maybe like activating a hi-hat module or something like that when I make one. And the one down here is just for the output indication LEDs. The current flowing between the output and input of the op amp is enough to light up the LEDs and give some fun flashing lights to indicate what the output is doing. So all this is well and good, but how exactly does the whole sampling and holding process take place? Well if we start from the input and imagine that we're sampling a signal of some kind, we first see an op amp buffer just to prevent any loading effects from previous circuit stages. But the output is connected directly into the input of a 4066 switch, where its control line is used as the sample input. So if the switch is open, the input signal is just held at the input and can't go anywhere. But as soon as the sample signal is received, it then closes the switch and allows the signal to pass on to the next stage, containing the charging cap and another op amp buffer. Now this part is where the real magic happens. The voltage from the input signal charges up the cap, but as soon as the sample signal goes low again and the switch is opened, the voltage on the cap has nowhere to go, because it's effectively trapped between the open switch and the op amp buffer. 
So the sampled voltage is just held on the output until another sample is made. But, and this is a very, very big but, the op amp must be high impedance like a TL074 because other ones like an LM324 have a small amount of leakage current on the inputs, which is enough to discharge the cap in a matter of seconds and the sampled input is no longer held there. We can actually hear this effect happening between the two different sample and holds. This top one is using a TL074 and we can hear the pitch from the TTO is kept pretty constant between samples. But if we try and do the same thing with this bottom one, which is using an LM324, well we can hear almost immediately just how quickly the cap discharges and raises the pitch. So this bottom line I just avoid using for any samples longer than a second until I can replace the chip. And that's basically all there is to it. It's a pretty simple module that opens up a world of possibilities. Plus that downsampling effect just keeps me entertained for literal hours at a time. Hopefully this video helped to make sense of what a sample and hold is and does and hopefully maybe even gave you a few patch ideas. But until next time, I'll see you later.